Hi everyone, Secretary Essen here, and today I have the great honor of interviewing a fabulous artist who I've been a fan of for a very long time. Uh, her name is Lois Van Barl, but you may know her better by her deviant art name, Loish. Um, I hope I pronounced all <laughs> those right, because... Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very good. Um, so I'm so grateful that you uh, took time out of your busy schedule to uh, to do this interview with me. And yeah, I've been a huge fan of your work for many years now. You are very popular on DeviantArt. Uh, so Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to ask, uh, start by asking, uh, how did you get into art in the beginning? Were you always someone who was drawing or did you come into art later on in life? I have always been drawing my whole life, uh, since I was little, since I was in kindergarten, I can remember it was like, I had, I always had identified myself as an artist, so uh, it was never a choice, uh, I never consciously decided to do art. Right, right. Um, so, okay, so do you come from a family of artists then? Is it something? No, <laughs> no I just, um, yeah, my family's fairly uncreative in the arts, um, so I don't know, really, I wasn't really inspired by my family, but it's just always been something that I was good at, I think, uh, um, compared to the people in my class, compared to, like, my friends and stuff, uh, they always said that I was good at it, and that always encouraged me to draw more, and, right. uh, and I think when I was really young, I already saw it as, like, such an essential part of my identity that, uh, you know, it's always been a thing. So did you always know then that you were going to be an artist, or did you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, I knew that I wanted to draw, like, forever, but um, I always thought, I always believed in the myth that people say you can't make any money as an artist, you can't make a living off of it, mm -hmm. because there's that cliche floating around that, you know, to be an artist you need to be a starving artist, basically. Right. And uh, so my whole life, I, I remember having a role model as a kid when I was, like, around six years old. It was a family of the uh, friend of the family who was a really good artist and I really admired her and she said that she had chosen to become an architect because she couldn't make any money as an artist mm. and I thought that I would have to do the same thing so I spent much of my childhood saying I was going to be an architect even though uh, I have no idea architecture. <laughs> okay so uh, wow yeah. <laughs> of course I mean by the time you know I always thought that I would have to in high school I was always thinking like uh, that I was going to study philosophy, or, oh, sorry about all the noise. <laughs> uh, I always thought I was going to study philosophy or history, things like that, because I figured I'd have to find an alternative to art. And mm. then eventually I decided, like, maybe that's nonsense. Maybe I can just make a living as an artist. And that's when I decided to be one for real, I guess, uh, as a career choice. And when did that happen? Uh, like, I think when I was 18, like, right about to graduate, I decided to study animation. It was like really an impulse. Like right. my art teacher said, I was sharing my thoughts with my art teacher who said, I was telling him I don't think I can make money as an artist. Mm -hmm. And he said that he had a friend who was an animator and that there's a lot of commercial work in animation that you can just, um, you know, you can earn a living. And then I just signed up for animation schools and went and did it. <laughs> it was very impulsive. Right. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask this question. Uh, when you were young, did you copy a lot of other art? Yeah, definitely. I think every uh, artist has done that at some point. I was re I copied a lot of uh, Art Nouveau. I would find these Art Nouveau drawings and then like twist them around to make them uh, fit what I thought was cool. So I would take like an Art Nouveau character and put like gothic jewelry on them and stuff. Yeah. And uh, look, Disney art, always copying it. And and I drew. I think until I was about sixteen. Uh, almost everything I drew was from life or from a photograph. So I didn't consider myself like a cartoonist or somebody who could draw from my imagination. I just like would would try to draw from life. So that's where I learned almost everything. It's pretty interesting because when I look at your work now, I see it sort of like I see a lot of Alphonse Mucha, but like yeah. yeah, I guess a bit of Disney, like a bit more cartoony than that. So that's that's pretty neat that. Um... That was always an inspiration. Were you insp inspired by, um, I don't know, uh, cartoons or, or anime or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
when I was uh, 15, I discovered the, I guess you could call it the online art community. Mm -hmm. I uh, started drawing on drawing boards and posting my work to DeviantArt, and I, I discovered uh, a lot of anime and manga styles, but I wasn't really into like specific animes or mangas. I was into artists who sort of appropriated the style and made it a little more Western. Like, those right. were my idols at the time, and in that sense, the style really trickled into my style as well. Right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was the same way, and I went to... Um, I don't know if you know Julie Dillon, but she had an art forum. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so you're 18 now, and so you went to animation school then? Yes. And where was this? Uh, I did a year in uh, Ghent in Belgium, because at that time... Uh, my family was living in Belgium, so I was looking for something in the area. Uh, and there's a really good animation school uh, in Ghent called, they call it GASK now, K-A-S-K. -K and um, yeah, I went there for a year and I decided that it wasn't working out very well at all. And then I switched to a Dutch animation school, to the Utrecht School of the Arts. Oh, why wasn't it, why wasn't it working out for you? Um, well, the... But they, it was like a very good school, um, like very high quality education, but also very, um, how do I say this, non, they were not into commercial, uh, like mainstream styles. They really wanted artistic right. uh, like artists. They wanted artists to graduate, like who had the, a very unique vision and a very unique style and took lots of risks and experimented a lot. Mm -hmm. And even though I have huge admiration for artists like that, um, I myself am a much more commercially minded artist. I just want to be able to, like, uh, you know, function well in the commercial art world. So they weren't really into like digital uh, media there. They really wanted you to work with like paint and, you know, very experimental traditional media, which is, you know, I have nothing against that, but it wasn't working for me at all. Right, right. Yeah, that's pretty common. I've heard of that a lot. Um... Especially from my European friends, they say that there's a lot of um, fine art type a yeah. push to do that. Um, yeah. Okay, so so you switched to uh, the other school, and then was this more focused on like commercial animation then? Yeah, it was much more like, well, for starters, you could really decide yourself what style you wanted to work in. I mean, they didn't really interfere with your style choices. And at the school before that, they were very strict about having, like, they really wanted you to adapt your style to something that was more unique. And they really tried to encourage you in the direction that they thought, they, they tried to push you in the direction that they thought was best for you. And at the new school, they really let you make your own choices. And that was great for me because I was a self-taught artist. I, I've been, taught myself everything I know about art. And I was already used to making my own choices. So it was perfect for me, and uh, much more digital media, and much more, you know, a bit less pretentious. That's really what it came down to. Right. How did you get into digital media then? Um, well, my parents got like a trial version of Photoshop with some other program, like in 2000 or something, like a really old version of Photoshop, and I just thought it was cool. So I just sat there with my mouse, like, using the smudge tool. <laughs> I thought that was, like, pretty awesome. And, uh... Just like experimented with it a lot, and um, and I think I always drew with like I always painted with acrylics and sketched, but it never really like I never really developed those skills well enough to be able to get like you know interesting results. Mm -hmm. And when I started working digitally, just trying out digital programs, I realized how you could create something that looked very finished and the colors were very bright and very clean and you know just got nicer results quicker. So I, I started th with that really young and I just always held on to it thinking that it was, you know, the, the most, the best way to work. Right. And then, uh, when did you pick up your first tablet then? Uh, yeah, I like dreamed of having a tablet, literally. I would have dreams where I had a tablet when I was 15 and I'd wake up like, why don't I have one? And I really <laughs> like, wanted it so bad. I was hassling my parents constantly to get me one. And then they finally got me like the cheapest possible tablet for Christmas in, when was it, 2003 or something? It was really, it was one of those tablets that's actually meant for people to like be able to place digital signatures. It was really small and 
Uh, yeah. So I think I was 16 at the time. I had my first tablet. I was just so happy. <laughs> wow. Um, wow, digital signatures. That's pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, I mine, was, mine was like a Wacom 6x4 graphire. But yeah. I think... Well, that graphire was a pretty good line of tablets. My, my first tablet was the Wacom Volito, I think it was called. It, it was just, it was like... Just wow. horrible. <laughs> but I was really glad. I but you were able to paint with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had drew with a mouse before that. I spent like a good year just mm. really digital art with a mouse. So anything yeah. was better than that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how long was your... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to pronounce it horribly. Utrecht? Utrecht, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to pronounce for non non Dutch people. Yeah, how um, come your English is so good if you're... Wait, is all Dutch yeah. people's English good? Uh, yeah, it kind seems of right. good that the accent is usually a bit thicker for most Dutch people, but uh, I grew up outside of the Netherlands. Oh, where was that? Uh, well, when I was four, I was born in Holland, and then when I was four, the family moved to uh, Falls Church in Virginia, oh. and we just went to American public school, so we just like assimilated into an American lifestyle. Right. And after that, we moved to Indonesia, uh, there for three years, and then four years in France and three years in Belgium, but they were all, we went to international schools, my wow. sisters and I, in every one of the countries where English is spoken. That's amazing. So, yeah. so I, I always spoke Dutch at home and English at school, and I mix the languages a lot. So. What did you speak in Indonesia? In uh, English, well, I guess, because you went to international yeah. school, right? Okay, I went to that international makes sense. school, yeah, I mean, I, I learned some Indonesian, but I was actually, I'm really bad at learning new languages, so... I stayed on a pretty low level for like the whole time I was living there. <laughs> right. Okay. So, sorry. Going back to my question, how long was the Utrecht program, the animation program? Four years. Four years. Okay. So, did you did you finish the whole four years? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I and... graduated in 2009. Oh, that's not long ago. Okay. Um, and then, but throughout that whole time, I guess you were still uh, doing the deviant art and. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, so after animation school, uh, what was it like after? Was it easy to find work, or what was that? Uh, yeah, for me, it was. And I always feel kind of conceited saying that, because for most people, it wasn't. Like, for a lot of people in my class, it wasn't really easy to find work right away. Right. But for me, it was, because I had been... Um, I mean, I've been actively posting things on the web and sharing my work with the internet and building up, like, a following since, well, like, 2003, 2004. So for a really long time, I've been uh, promoting myself, basically. And throughout uh, college, I did the same thing. Because my teachers, even at the Utah School of the Arts, like, I had learned from that one year in that first college to... Uh, sort of develop a secondary style that wasn't as girly, that wasn't as elfish and fantasy-ish as uh, what I do usually, because I knew that teachers easily criticize that as the easy choice. Mm -hmm. for, for me, my teachers were always like, okay, well, this is what you always do, try something new. And um, and so for me, DeviantArt was like an outlet for a certain approach to drawing. Like All of my digital paintings, all of the super girly stuff went on the internet, and I tried to approach my school projects differently. So I was really actively, you know, all those years actively promoting my work and I'd been getting job offers, like freelance job offers for years. By the time I graduated I'd already, I'd had to turn down so many interesting commissions uh, and by the time I graduated I could just start saying yes to them. So I was, it was, it wasn't that hard to start a freelance career. Okay, so you started freelance and you didn't end up in a studio? No, because I didn't want to. I, I wanted to. Uh, I wasn't so sure, and I'm still not really sure uh, what direction I want to specialize in. Mm -hmm. I like doing all different kinds of things. I like doing concept art and also like game art, animation, portraits. I, I like all of them, and I like the variety. So. Right. Um, and I guess, do you like the freedom that comes with freelance? That. Yeah, definitely. Right now, I do. Right. Um, so. I visited your site and I saw there was like this thing called tricolor. Um, oh yeah. yeah. So uh, it seems like that's an animation project. Can you talk a little bit about what that is and how that came yeah, about? That, 
Yeah, that's my, that's technically it's my graduation project from college. And the graduation project, like, for, for, the, for your graduation project, you needed to come up with, you needed to write a thesis on a topic and then apply what you've learned in your thesis, like apply the knowledge to a, an animation project. And I wrote a thesis on um, animation and advertising, the relationship between them, because I wanted to sort of like make a basis for my career as a commercial artist, um, but still be able to analyze it and look at it through like a sort of academic lens. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what came out of that was a project that I came up with an idea for a fictional company that um, didn't sell actual products, but more like emotions, like pure emotions. So. Uh, you could just go to a company and be like, okay, I, I want to buy this emotion. And that's, it, it's of course like completely fictional. And, uh, and I was thinking that the company could sell three emotions and for each emotion, which could be symbolized by a color, there could be an animation about that experience. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I came up with the first one, Tricom Blue. And I have the script and the storyboard for the other two, but unfortunately I keep not finding the time to be able to actually finish off the animation. Oh. So it's sort of... Uh, it's like constantly on hold. <laughs> yeah, but you will finish it one day, or? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got I've gotten this far. Every time that I had some time off, I would uh, continue doing research as well. I mean, I, I don't even. For me, it's really important that the animations get done, but also that they're they have a certain meaning. Uh, so I've done a lot of research and a lot of thinking. I wrote a few different versions of scripts and made a lot of artwork. And I'm definitely I would never just let that you know sit aside forever. I mean, I have to do something with it. But I need to wait till I have more time. Right. Um, so you mentioned that in school, the teachers would kind of push you away from some of the girly stuff. Um, yeah. Did you find that that bled into your work at all? Yeah, definitely. Because when I was, um, uh, when I decided to go to animation school in 2004, my work was extremely, like, childish and girly and I still enjoy those things. I mean I love you know, I, I had this character that was like heavily inspired by my little pony, you know, and had like a tail and blue and pink colors and I just love that stuff. But um from from going to art school I learned to put more of an edge into my work. I started liking stuff that was a little darker and grittier and more textured. And that's really uh like my a lot of my work now is very colorful, but I've also got more like gritty, brownish, darkish kind of illustrations in comparison. Mm -hmm. And that was really because of how art school pushed me to try different things. Okay. So would you recommend then, because um, I, I sometimes wonder about this, like, what's better to focus more on your passion or to get out of your comfort zone? You know, like... Yeah, that that's always really tough. Yeah, because you can do, like, the trick is to finding finding the sweet spot between both. Um, because you've, you've got people who are always trying to push themselves and experiment, which is good. But in that process, you could also sort of neglect to develop something super unique that's really yours. And I used to think that, like, having something super unique was a bad thing because it traps you. You get trapped in a certain style. and you become less flexible, there's less potential in what you can do than when you were just starting out and trying literally every single kind of style you came across. But at the same time, like as, as an artist with the career that I've had so far, having a specialized style, having something that's uniquely yours that you've become very good at because you focus on that, uh, has helped me so much. It, it helps, um, helps you get noticed as an artist. And I, I've also found that I can work really well uh, in teams because I have my own vision that I can bring and other artists bring their own vision. Right. So so constantly challenging yourself and getting out of your comfort zone can be a really good and productive thing to develop your style further but you also need to always come back and figure out like what is your thing and what is you, you know you need to like create that comfort zone that does work. Right. Do you if that makes sense. Oh yeah yeah for sure. Do you find that um, you would get influenced by your fans and like if they really gravitated towards one, I don't know, like you maybe you drew a figure in a certain way and they're like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Does that influence you too? 
Yeah, I think if I didn't have any following at all and didn't have people around me who had an opinion about what I make, I would be making maybe something completely different. Because for me, the feedback is a super important part of the process. Uh, a lot of the time when I draw, I have no idea whether it's... Like, I, I, I like to work intuitively and feel whether the drawing is going in the right direction and whether I like it, but I have no idea if that's, if that's translating at all. And for me, a lot of the power of a good drawing, for me, in, in the style that I work, is whether other people are feeling the same thing, like enjoying the drawing in the way that I enjoyed making it. And if that doesn't work, then you need to change your approach. So that's definitely shaped, maybe sometimes a bit too much, uh, the feedback that I get shapes the direction I go in. Definitely. And have you found it, um, I don't know, difficult or was there a transition um, with becoming so popular? Uh, does it, for instance, do you spend a lot of time having to answer emails or private messages or things like this? Um, and how yeah. do you sort of deal with that? It was a very gradual process. Like I, um, I've gradually, like every every year my following is bigger than the year before and it's not like a thing that suddenly happens it just slowly changes and slowly expands so I've been able to it hasn't been like a extremely overwhelming I've slowly gotten used to it but I literally can't keep up with my messages uh, on a lot of sites and the thing is it's my own choice of course because I choose to make lots of um, accounts on different social networks mm -hmm. I figure like I love the fact that I can use Facebook for some things, Tumblr for other things, uh, Twitter for other things, but I just can't keep up with the messages that I get on all those different platforms. Right. So, there are a lot of messages that go unanswered, and um, and I try to make it clear to people that the, if they have a question that they really need to email me, because I don't neglect my email, right. um, which is like a struggle for me, because uh, if, I, if I neglect my email for a week, I feel horrible for all, you know, I have to leave a lot of emails waiting, and yeah, it's difficult to keep up with it. It is. Right. But it's, but it's absolutely worth it, because having that following is the biggest compliment you get. Right, yeah. Um, so speaking of that, how important do you think it is then uh, for an artist to also be engaged in self-promotion? Uh, I can only speak from my perspective, because I think every... Everybody who feels good about where they're where they are as an artist has different ways of getting there and different things that work for them. For me, uh, having like an online following has been uh, promoting my work online has been like essential to everything that I am as an artist right now. Because the reason I get work, the reason that I get like uh, managed to, you know, make a living off of what I do is because my work gets noticed by potential clients. Mm -hmm. And my work gets noticed because I have, because I promote my work online and because people share it and people talk about it and promote it for me, really. And it's, I think there are other ways to be, you know, to, to have a life as an artist and not have to do that. But for me, it's been like absolutely the most fundamental thing, hmm. the most important thing. Right. So how much would you say then, um, of your day would be divided into drawing stuff and then I don't know what you'd call it, marketing or yeah. um, well it's not really something that I do day by day because um, right now for example I'm working with a client on a really intensive project and I just focus on that mm -hmm. and I don't let myself uh, work on other things like I don't give myself a lot of time to you know get on my social networks or promote what I do uh, also because I have an arm injury, so I really need to be super careful about what I put my energy into. Um, and But other, you know, when I have like weeks where I don't have work for a little while or I'm looking for work, I just focus my entire work day on, uh, I guess you'd call it marketing. Right. So making sketches, uh, putting them on Tumblr, like sharing that on Facebook, letting people know how I'm doing, updating my website, that sort of thing. Um, so was your arm injury art related or that's just something? Yes. Oh, it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What happened? Um, I drew too much <laughs> and I got a, I didn't take enough breaks and I got, um, t what do they call it, tennis elbow? Yeah, yeah. So there's basically like a group of uh, like tenants here right. that are all freaking out. 
Right. Um, so do you do stretches then and take breaks, or how do you deal yeah. with that? Um, well, I don't think there's anything. We went to the physical therapist, and there's not really anything you can do besides let it rest and let it heal on its own. So I'm just trying to manage the soreness and not work too much, you know, try to like really feel my limits and work totally differently than I've done my whole life, which is really tough. Mm. Um. I, I've always, I've always wanted to, like I've always been, I think I've, the most improvement I've ever made in a short period of time was in a phase where I spent entire nights drawing, one drawing after the next, you know, until the sun came up and then falling asleep, waking up, going straight back to the computer and drawing more. Mm-hmm. And that's always been my way of uh, of working, like really loving what I do, but going all out, going 100% and exhausting myself with drawing because I loved it so much. And this is the first time that I've, in my life, that I've really had to take it easy and been forced to work in a sort of calm and relaxed way, which is really not <laughs> how I'm used to doing things. So if you could give yourself advice, um, like to the past self, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think about that a lot. <laughs> what, what would you say to avoid um, an injury like the one you got? Yeah, I would tell myself to take breaks no matter what. I'd tell myself like that working intensively and passionately is fine, but you have to take occasional breaks. Like you have to stop. For you know the thing. I think the thing that did it for my arm was that I. Uh, spent a lot of time on Facebook while drawing. I had the tendency to really quickly switch between my art and Facebook really quickly just to get some just new thoughts going, you know, because I tend to get, when I draw, I feel very, uh, like I need to listen to something or read something or get some input while I'm drawing. And I kept going to Facebook. And then I installed an, uh, an extension that blocks Facebook during work hours. And I was all proud of myself for working really hard and not being distracted, but what that did was it took away the breaks that I needed (laughs) that apparently were essential, you know. I I just kept drawing nonstop, and then, so I would tell myself to, like... (laughs) Don't install that. But it's natural to occasionally take a break and seek out distraction. I think if I had done that, this would have never happened. Uh, I really regret it. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) So that's a message to everybody who doesn't have the injury yet. (laughs) Cherish the fact that you don't have an injury and, and wow. Okay, I'll shut up then because I tell people like yeah. you, you should stop being you should stop using Facebook so much. But I guess no, it's yeah. No, it was my it was the only thing keeping me oh, <laughs> regrets. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like well, okay, you you were saying how you're drawing all the time, and it seems like you're pretty confident about art. Um, but did you ever have doubts of maybe I'm not good enough or look at how good everyone else is or will I make it or did those thoughts plague you at yeah. all? Uh, I have them all the time, constantly. Oh, still? With every, yeah. With everything I draw, I just think like by the end, I'm, you know, I get into a phase where I'm like, oh, this is going well. Mm. Yeah. You know, getting into the flow and then I, then I look at the end result and I'm like, what have I what is this? Mm. This is terrible. Mm. I like scream at myself, like, how could anybody like this? This is the same crap you always do, and this is boring, and there are so many better artists. And, and then I put it online, and then people are like, oh, this is pretty nice. And, and then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Have they, ever, yeah I mean, have they ever not done that? Like, not been not, positive? And then you, you uh, put it on, and then they're like, this, this is not... Yeah. Oh, they have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had, I've had lots of drawings where I put, I mean, I've always, people, people always say that people on the internet are mean. In my experience, they're generally very nice. Almost, you know, I, I've, I've always gotten po- at least one bit of positive feedback on everything I've posted from somebody who's willing to point out the positive mm-hmm. sides. But I've had plenty of drawings where everyone's like, wow, I, you know, especially since I'm always posting work, like, I'm a relatively productive artist, and, and you can see my style develop. Uh, and you can see my improvements, and and people, a lot of people follow my work not necessarily because of the individual drawings, but also because they like seeing the progress mm. and how how I how I develop as an artist. And I've disappointed a lot of people by not really progressing. Like I spent, I think, in 2011, there was a year that was very uh, unproductive in terms of improvement, and I just kept staying too much in that comfort zone that we were talking about earlier. And people pointed that out, and it was harsh. 
uh, mm -hmm. for me to hear. But definitely what I needed to hear. Right. Okay. So, who would you say are your greatest artistic influences right now? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, right now, I nothing comes to mind. <laughs> if I had a, if you gave me like a few minutes to sort of browse the internet and find some of my favorite drawings, I would be able to point out some things. But actually, right now, I'm really focused on. Uh, working on that project for the client, so I've sort of shut out my my artistic influences and started thinking only about what I need for that job. Right. Okay. But my best mm. the best indication of my influences now are if you go to my DeviantArt favorites and you see what I've favorited recently, because I I only favorite drawings that I think are just amazing and that really inspire me and uh, and that's a variety of different artists. I've, I I mean I could send a link. Um, and then you could see the stuff that, that works for me. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll post it in the, like, it'll appear beside your face. Yeah. That is definitely the best indication of what inspires me, because it's not really one specific artist, uh, especially in the way that I use, use the web nowadays to just sort of quickly check out different things or look on Tumblr at all the different things that have been posted. It's always, like, individual drawings that I see here and there that really get to me and not necessarily, like, the work of one artist. Right. Maybe I'll I don't have enough time anymore to like really look into one specific artist. Yeah. I've noticed there's a few different art movements recently that they seem more recent anyway. Um, one is the whole card art thing. I don't know if you've seen that where there's so much of these highly rendered, polished illustrations, fantasy illustrations. Um, another one I noticed is Pixiv, where there's a lot of Japanese artists just yeah. doing really crazy stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, that's also very inspiring. Definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, so what advice would you have to young artists who maybe they want to be little loishes <laughs> 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 or, or follow in your, in your footsteps? Uh, well, I would say based on my own experience um, to draw a lot and get really passionate about what you like and don't be afraid of um, because in the beginning I remember when I was starting out I was very insecure and very frustrated pretty much constantly frustrated looking at artists who are really good and thinking how do they do it how and just completely not getting it and trying and trying not not getting there but all that trying is what drove my improvement and I think it's important to feel to, to to get passionate about something, like find what you really love and just put all your energy into it. Because this sounds really negative, but the older you get and the more developed you get as an artist, the, the less, you know, the possibilities aren't the same as they were when you were young and starting out and figuring out where you could go and what you could do. You never improve as quickly as you did in that early phase of being an artist and really need to treasure it and just, you know, draw a lot practice a lot, try lots of different things, and in the process, post it online, share it with the world, because that, that really worked out well for me. Wow. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap things up. Um, is there any, any final thoughts you had? I thought it was a very nice interview. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did a good job then. Great. <laughs> anyway... Thanks so much for taking the time to uh, to do this interview, and I'm sure my viewers learned a lot, and I'll be posting links to your work in the description. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks so much. All right. No problem. Bye. <laughs> Bye.